G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our small little backyard farm and aquaponics YouTube channel. This week's clip I'll be taking a bit of a wander around the aquaponics, giving you an update on the fish, showing you some maintenance I did on the other fish tank that's empty at the moment. We'll go for a bit of a wander around the grow beds as well. Just before we get started though, I've had a couple of people um, ask why they're not getting notifications for our video. Um, I won't go through it here, I'll defer to someone who's explained it better than I can. Um, click on that little link up there and that'll take you to Tommy's video on his Alderman Farms YouTube channel. Uh, and he just goes through the steps you need to follow to subscribe to a channel and then get the notifications when we post content to YouTube. Uh, he also goes through a few other tips you might want to follow uh, just to help to support your um, YouTube creators that you like to watch. While you're there, check out Tommy's other clips. He's got some fantastic ones there on his homesteading channel. Um, but yeah, I'll stop nattering on about that. We'll jump over to the fish and we'll have a bit of a gander at how they're going. So we'll toss a bit of food in and see if these fellas are hungry. Normally it doesn't take them long to um, come up and make a bit of an appearance. They're actually feeding a lot more up the, the surface now than they were originally. So totally different to the jade perch though. The jade perch were always from day one straight up to the surface and smashing the feed. Uh, just to bring you up to date with the uh, fish side of the system, we've only got the silver perch going at the moment in this tank here and we're looking at uh, repopulating some jade perch in the other tank. So that'll be a little ways down the track though at this point in time. We're thinking of just keeping these silver perch to run the system and to feed the plants uh, probably toward, until later on in the year. And then after we make a few changes to the system, um, yeah, we'll definitely be getting some jade perch. So these guys here, um, they did have a bit of a bacterial problem um, a few, about, oh, it's over a month ago now we were having issues, but that's pretty much well all been um, nipped in the butt. Uh, so all these guys now are looking fantastic. Whenever I drop the camera down there, I'm not seeing any signs of infection on any of the fish. So pretty chuffed about that. So over here in what is now the spare fish tank, uh, because we harvested all the fish out of it uh, about a month ago now, um, we had a few problems with solids settling out on the bottom. The reason being is the tank is so tall and the water was coming in from the venturi just over the side here and it was making a little bit of a, um, a swirl on the surface of the water but it wasn't dragging the solids in the base to the um, centre where the solids out lifting outlet is and taking them out. Normally with the fish down there swimming around they're disturbing the solids, putting them in the water column and they were taking them out but without them to disturb them they were just congregating on the base there. So I came down earlier today, rigged up a little bit of a siphon using a 25 millimeter hose and section of pipe and just siphoned those solids out onto the lawn. The reason I didn't put it onto any garden beds is there's still a high level of salt in here and I really don't want the salt on the garden beds. So once the majority of them were removed I decided to replace the venturi that was bringing water into the fish tank connected on a uh, section of hose that is long enough to reach to the bottom of the tank and just turn the valve back on. Now what that's done is that started a bit of a circular flow on the base of the tank so those solids are slowly being picked up by that flow, taken to the solids lifting outlet and then whisked away to the radial flow settler or radial flow filter. So I think I've um, fixed that problem. So with the plant side of things, it's a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. And I think that's partly due to the amount of salt in the system. We've had some plants like the beetroot that I've pulled out. They just weren't growing and they ended up being hit by the mites again. This perpetual spinach is another one, not doing much chop at all. It's, it's not looking crook, it's just not putting on any extra growth at the moment. Down here, the cucumber that was there has been pulled out and replaced with a volunteer that sprouted. I accidentally dropped a seed and yeah, it's come good. The Egyptian spinach, it doesn't look too worried about the increased salt. But I have noticed that the gingers and the turmeric aren't putting on much growth this season. The Brazilian spinach doesn't look to be bothered at all. We've been harvesting that a little bit from the system and yeah, it keeps putting out new growth. The celery here, this is the red stalk celery. I don't think it likes the salt, but I'm gonna leave it in there, see if it picks up after we dump a little bit more water from the system and reduce the salt level. Around the front here, we have what's left of the oregano or oregano. I gave it a really heavy cutback. Uh, I don't think it likes the amount of salt in the system at all. Uh, the leaves are looking a little bit yellow there. 
Things like the sage though, it doesn't seem too bothered. We've harvested actually quite a bit of that for a couple of chicken dishes. The mushroom herb, it's just powering along. We just can't eat this stuff fast enough. I'm actually gonna have to cut back from that line back because there's a couple of plants under there that have been lost. I think there's a spinach and maybe a, oh sorry, celery and a Brazilian spinach. The rosemary down here doesn't look to be too affected by the salt whatsoever. It's still putting on new growth points. I should probably take some cuttings of them and start off some new plants, I think. The garlic chives and the lettuce that we're growing in this corner here. The lettuce has been removed, but I saved the seeds because I've got a couple of patrons who are interested. Um, saving lettuce seed is really easy. All you need to do is get the dry flower heads, rub them between your hands, catch the seeds in a container, and then just pretty much will winnow off all the chaff and all the light bits. That's basically where you pour one container into another and let the breeze blow off all the little chaffy bits and you end up with some nice, fairly clean seeds. So I've also got probably about a dozen or so seeds from these garlic chives as well. Thanks again, Vanessa. So a little bit of seed saving happening in the patch. The uh, Owen Knock is still going strong. I've got a number of cuttings just where we've harvested it. I've got them sitting in a jar of water up in the house and I might pop them in some of the gaps that we've got created around the place. Down here, we've got a nice bit of real estate open up here. This is where some of the beetroot were. I did pop in a little basil cutting uh, from what I harvested last night. So with this little bit of open real estate here, I thought I'd sow out some parsley seeds. This is just a plant that went to seed down the back. I've been walking around the garden, breaking off individual flower heads and sprinkling them around. So. There's quite a number of seeds just in there. It's as easy as just spreading them over the top of the clay. I'll grab a few more and just throw them randomly through the beds. So hopefully we'll have a half decent germination rate there and we'll end up with some nice flat leaf parsley coming up in there. Just down in here, I'm running a little bit of an experiment with some moringa cuttings. I've popped one moringa cutting in here. It's not looking too happy, but I'll, there you go. The leaves are just falling off. But I'll show you the other one that's doing a slightly better in a tick. Over here, the Kangkong harvested quite a lot from this plant last night and I'll be taking some more off today. Down here, we have had a couple of losses. I had some strawberry plants just under this Kangkong here. Um, I lost one a while back and the other one looked like it was sort of holding on, but about two weeks ago, we'd have pretty much all dried up and we removed him from the bed. Bit of a shame, it's just a, one of those casualties from the salt. And next to it here, I think we have another salt casualty. This is our thyme plant. We've got a little bit of green down the bottom here and up the top there's a little bit left as well. But I have a feeling it's going to die off very, very soon. Um, as soon as the salt levels are reduced, I'll just pop another plant in because we really do love our fresh thyme. Uh, Bianca harvested some and we've got it dried up in the house, but yeah, I do like it fresh. Just behind the thyme here, I have the other Moringa cutting. Now it's had a couple of leaves die off on this branch here. This branch was dead before I popped it in but I have had a little leaf section sprout there and some flower buds. So fingers crossed this one's going to do all right. I'm hoping there's not too much salt in the system and it does set some roots. And down here, um, this is my um, Welsh onions. They're just not putting on much growth at all. And these guys here I thought were also Welsh onions, but it turns out they're red shallots. Uh, B had came down and had a bit of a look and compared them with some others. And these guys are definitely the red shallots. Uh, the little sage here hasn't done too well, probably because it's shaded out by this Owen Knock. Just over here, there's a couple of plants I've popped in randomly. Just a garlic clove we found laying in the clay from the last harvest. I missed him. And a perennial leek. This one here hopefully will um, do all right. There's another little shoot down the bottom there. So hopefully we'll get a nice clump here in the aquaponics. This beautiful turmeric here is a volunteer grown from a small root section that I left when I harvested last year's. It hasn't put on a great deal of growth under the clay. I had a bit of a dig around the other day. I can't see any hands forming off the side, so it'll be interesting to see how she goes. More of this bloom and mushroom herb. Um, it's turned into a bigger weed than the Okinawan spinach was last year. Down here is some more Brazilian spinach. Some of this will probably come off for tonight's meal and another Egyptian spinach we've been um, harvesting a fair bit from. Now the ginger's not doing much chop this season in the aquaponics. Last year was a bumper harvest. I have a feeling it's got to do with the salt. Now they were doing fine and setting up new growth and like these little ones here, 
but then as soon as the salt went in they just started to yellow off and get a little bit manky looking so I was actually tossing up with the idea of pulling these two plants out and popping them in a root pouch near the back stairs now that the melon from there's finished so we'll see how that goes another reason these guys may not be going too well is that we've got a lot of um, shade coming in from the neighbor's tree still haven't um, had them pop around with a chainsaw to trim that back yet and this mango above us here is blocking a lot of the morning sun so I need to get in there chop that back and I'll mulch it up and we'll just pop it on the ground down around the base of the mango tree here but yeah uh, it would have been nice to have a decent aquaponic ginger harvest but you know such is I suppose just up here at the other end of the aquaponics to give you a comparison this is some of my soil ginger and as you can see we've got a couple of little baby shoots coming on there so this one plant here I'd say will give us close oh, 700 grams ish or about what's that I think that's close to two pounds and this one here I don't think will give us probably half that but yeah um, the soil ginger is going to do a lot better I think than the aquaponic this year just a little bit of news on what's going on here behind the scenes um, the other week I started Ryan Chatterson's College of Aquaponics Engineering and Design course thank you very much Ryan thoroughly enjoying it I've almost oh, actually I'm about halfway through module number two and hope to start number three on Monday and you guys will see bits and pieces I've picked up from that um, just as I work on the system around the place so far I'm really impressed it's been very informative um, what else oh giveaway t-shirt giveaway had a few people ask about the aquaponic grow different root and ramble t-shirts we're actually giving one away to you folks over there in the states and for you Aussies that want to go in the draw I bought a $35 US gift card so those guys are up for grabs all you need to do is follow the link in the description below over to my Facebook page and all the details on how to enter are over there also too Patreon folks, thank you very much for all the support you guys have been showing us of late. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Last weekend ended up with another almost three hour long hangout with the third tier patrons from over there. Had an absolute ball. Uh, Rick, a local patron from Patreon, he's helping me source some discounted um, Wi-Fi boosting equipment. So hopefully I'll be able to bring the laptop or the mobile phone out the back here and we'll be able to do live streaming on YouTube. So not only, um, you know, will the patrons benefit, but you folks on YouTube will be able to talk to me in real time, hopefully with very little lag as I wander around the patch and do maybe an update on the aquaponics or composting or something down the back there. So thank you very much you awesome folks over on patreon so just at the end of the clip here i'll pop a link to patreon and you can go over and check it out for yourself if you're interested there'll be a few other videos you can check out too i do hope you've enjoyed the clip and that your aquaponic system and your veggie beds are booming and i'll catch you next clip cheers all